John is on as well. And John uh, has an insurance update. And it looks like we cleared the work comp question already, but John, I want you to know we, uh, we had one of what does work comp cover and eventually you can grab that. Yes, yep. So um, kind of give you a broad overview, obviously. Um, MATID is, or the Minnesota Association of Insurance and uh, Bond Trust is a separate organization from the association, but we partner together and we do a lot of funding. So that's kind of how we interact. Um, we are very closely knit together, but a lot of the programs we do help to fund, uh, obviously the, the legislative, the education pieces format. Uh, and, and so the association uh, does get a lot of funding from the trust to make sure that we're keeping you abreast of issues and also to uh, help with the legislative side. So um, within the, the trust, we actually have two different programs. We have what we call our workers' compensation program, which there was that question. So I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that first. Um, workers' compensation covers any officer, supervisor, clerk, treasurer, um, any employee that works for the township, election judges, if they were to get hurt while they're performing their duties in any official capacity for the township. So I think it's important to, to make sure that you realize that this is a coverage that every township should have, whether it's through MAT, or through MATIT, sorry, or through another uh, commercial carrier, you need to make sure you have it because you wanna protect your township. Um, I'll give a quick example. Uh, we had a township where the clerk went out, slipped uh, doing some township business, ended up uh, breaking their hip we, uh, because they had work cop in their township uh, coverage through Matic. We actually paid the claim. Um, and, and so they, they were covered and it doesn't go against your personal health insurance or the township is not going to be then liable for that coverage. And uh, in the case of this hip that I was referring to, it's probably about a $200,000 claim that the trust has had to pay out. So that's what workers comp covers. It covers basically any injury that an, an officer, a clerk, a treasurer, incurs while they're performing their duties as a township officer or any employee that, of the township. So that's that's our work comp program. But then we also have another program which we call our, our consolidated liability program or as we refer to it, shortening it up a little bit, CLC. And what that program does is that actually does a little bit more. Uh, it covers all your general liability. Um, it covers property, uh, any of your tools and equipment, inland marine, uh, business autos, uh, crime coverage. So there's a much broader thing. And then obviously everybody in, in Matt has the clerk and uh, or treasurer and clerk bond. Um, and that's position specific bond that covers if there's in, any impropriety by the clerk or treasurer, uh, you can turn in a claim and we make the township uh, I don't want to say whole because in some cases uh, we actually have a, a current case right now where we have a township that they actually uh, far exceeded the, the amount of the clerk and treasurer bonds. So uh, you can pick the level you want and we'll pay you up to that level. Um, so, so you do have clerk and treasurer bond automatically. Anybody who belongs to Matt receives that. But then uh, townships buy from Matt at additional coverages such as the property, the, the general liability, the crime coverage, firefighting uh, coverage, um, and business auto, and, and what we call inland marine, which is tools and contractors, tools and equipment. So that's kind of a broad overview of what we offer. Um, the one thing I will say that we've learned in the last year, uh, before I get into my presentation, I'm, I'm going through more things here. But uh, we've learned in the last year that a lot of our townships have multiple insurance policies. And we're not sure why, um, but what we recommend you to do is if you're paying to two or three different insurance companies besides Matt, uh, you wanna make sure that you, you talk to us and, and we'll help walk you through how to consolidate that down, possibly so you only have one, one insurance bill that you're paying. Um, 
But we have found that some insurance companies have their property through one insurance company and their liability through the, tr uh, through the trust and then uh, and their autos through somebody else. Um, it, it happens uh, more often than we care to admit right now. Um, so we are working on trying to help townships get that consolidated uh, because the less you have to deal with multiple carriers, the easier it is for you. And in addition to that, it's easier to pay one bill than multiple bills. So that's kind of a broad overview of what we have. If there are questions, I will go through in my presentation and talk about who the staff is and, and also uh, how to contact us. Um, we want to make sure that you feel comfortable reaching out to us um, because again, what we do is a lot of our, uh, we have great coverage for our townships, but in addition to that, what we also do is we also help to provide a lot of money towards training, education, advocacy for the association um, and the support staff here in the, the office. So that's where a lot of our, 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 our dollars go is to help support everything that goes on in township business. So with that, we're going to, I'm going to share my screen here and hopefully it works. Um, so uh, my presentation has kind of talked about, he said, she said, and it's kind of, how do we, how do we document a claim? And um, we have a couple of different ways. Um, so what do you do when you're, when your road grader or dump truck looks like this. Can everyone oh, see my John, screen? Excuse not? me, John, oh, you're, we don't see your screen yet. So you'll have to go to share your screen and then click on the document. Oh, there we go. Perfect. There. Now, now yep. can you, now that works. That Thanks. Yep. Is it showing like road graders? <laughs> yeah. You're showing, what is your road grader dump truck look like this? Yep. Yeah. Got that's it. how I drive. But anyway, um, so what do you, what do you do when you, when your, your dump truck or, or grader looks like this? Well, um, there's a claims procedure that we have at Matt. And the first thing you wanna do is either call, uh, well, first things first, you wanna make sure that uh, you're out of harm's way, but the next thing you wanna do is make sure that you reach out to us either through calling us or emailing the staff. Um, we have our email addresses here and also on the insurance webpage, um, but you wanna reach out to us. And then, you know, what we want to do is we have a procedure and that procedure is uh, some type of loss occurs as, as we see the, the road grader, uh, the snowplow, and now we see the snowplow and the, the snowplow hitting the car. Um, so we want to, we want to make sure some type of loss, well, some type of loss occurs. And then if there's bodily injury, obviously the first thing you want to do is make sure that in, everyone is out of imminent, imminent danger and really making sure that, you know, the, the, there's no potential for any further da uh, danger to any of the individuals or the vehicles or anything like that. So um, you wanna do that. And then you wanna contact the property authorities if there's an accident um, on the roadway, you wanna make sure you either contact the sheriff, the highway patrol, the, the local police, wh whoever is the proper authority for documenting the claim. So you wanna make sure you're following that procedure. In addition to that, you want to start documenting what occurred and, and taking photos. Um, most people have cell phones now that, that they carry with them that have, you know, photo capabilities. Start taking pictures right away of road conditions. Take pictures of the damage. Uh, take pictures of anything that may have contributed to the accident. Because what this will do is this will help, number one, from our our, our claims adjudication process or our claims adjusting process. Um, and that's important because if, if we don't have proper documentation, then we're going to have to try to figure out how to recreate what the conditions were at the time of the, the crash. And in some cases, and we'll talk about this a little later, in some cases, proper documentation will also help us to say, you know what, the township wasn't at fault. They were doing exactly what they were supposed to be doing at the time this occurred. And the, the other party decided to do something uh, that, that put our township employee or supervisor or officer at risk. So that's important to realize as well. Um, and then 
The next thing you want to do is once you've, you've got it documented, you want to contact us right away, either through our 800 number or emailing or, or uh, uh, faxing us the claim information. Um, that's important so that we can start the process of making sure that the township gets whole and you get your equipment fixed right away or you get your property fixed. Um, we just want to make sure we're doing it on a timely basis. So contact us right away and then we'll get the process started. Now, some of the questions we'll ask when you call or email us is, we'll be looking for obviously the township name and county. Um, we'll wanna make sure you have, if you know the policy number, put it down there so we know which policy you have. Um, the name of the person that's reporting the claim as well as your contact information. So in some cases, it may be the clerk that reports it, um, but we wanna know, should we be talking to the supervisor or the treasurer or the, the, the employee? So you'll wanna make sure you, you share that information with us so that we know who is the right person to talk to. We typically will correspond uh, mainly with the clerk. So the clerk will get all the correspondence as far as what the coverage is what the 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 any uh, loss information so we'll be contacting them but we want to make sure we reach out to the right person so we know who that is you want to make sure you have the date of loss um, that helps us now in some cases you're not always going to know the date of loss like especially when you have road grader glass claim you may not know exactly when it happened um, you may just see at some point in time the window on the road grader or the snowplow cracks. Um, in that case, you know, we'll just take the date that, that you reported as kind of the lost date. Put down the clerk's name, telephone number, and applicable email address if possible so that we know how to get in correspondence with them with any questions we may have or being able to send out any information on the claim. And then what type of loss is it? Is it glass claim? Is it, you know, a snow plow that got damaged? Is it a liability claim where your snow plow driver is driving down the road and hits a, a trailer that's parked in the road? Uh, we'll want to know that so we can kind of figure out how to best um, adjust the claim and make sure we get the claim taken care of so you guys don't have to worry about it. And then again, any other additional township contact information. It may be the maintenance supervisor. It may be the, the snowplow operator at that point in time. So we'll wanna make sure we know who we should be contacting uh, to help get that. And then if there's, any, if there's a claimant, uh, so let's say in the case of a snowplow where it hits a car, um, we need to know the, the third party's information and their, their email information and any of, of their insurance information. Uh, we've had a couple of cases in the last year where we've had um, a car that rear-ended a snowplow. Uh, so what we ended up doing is we ended up taking care of the township, making sure they were paid in full, but we also then went against the uh, third parties uh, insurance and, and, and subrogated against them to get the money back to the trust for what we paid the township. Because our first responsibility is making sure that the township is made whole and that you guys are, are able to fix your equipment and continuing doing uh, the, the municipal activities that you need to do. Um, so when, we, when you're talking to the third party, one of the key things that we always want to say is be careful about what you say and how you say it and what can be construed as part of the township's fault. Um, it's important to make sure that you're very and, and anybody who's involved in, in an accident or, or an, an issue is very conservative about what, they, what information they volunteer because that can help to, it, it can either help or hinder us in how we um, adjust the claim. So we wanna be very careful about what we say and do not say something that makes it sound like, yeah, the township was 100% at fault uh, because that doesn't bode well for us trying to adjust if we need to go against their insurance company. Um, exchange insurance information when calling, so we, we know exactly who that is. We've talked about that. Um, it's important that, that everything is passed over to the claims administrator so that once we get the initial claim, we'll turn it over to the, to the person who handles 
the claim in our office. And basically she'll be getting in touch with you to go through you know, additional questions, may have questions in more in depth to ask, okay, what was the mileage? What was some of these other things that we're not concerned about to get the claim initially set up? but she's going to, she'll need as part of, of the processing of the claim. And then once the investigation is completed, the claim will either be approved or denied, which is standard. Um, and if, if it's approved, obviously we'll, we'll send a check out to, to the township to make them whole. If it's denied, you'll receive a declination letter that'll be sent out and, and basically it'll tell you exactly what the reasoning for the, the, the denial of, of the claim is. So that's kind of our on property and, and general or property and, and inland marine. Uh, that's what our procedure is for claim handling. Now, our, our general liability coverages are a little more complex. Typically, uh, those arise when we get a lawsuit by a third party against the township. Um, so the first thing you'd want to do is contact us uh, and let us know, hey, we, we received a complaint or a summons or a lawsuit. What do we do? Um, we'll tell you probably if you've got a physical, if you've been served by a processor to send, send that claim up to us, send the, the document. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll start to process that. What we'll do is we'll review it against your case, uh, the case against your coverage. And then we'll go through and we will figure out who we're going to assign for defense counsel. We have um, basically a, a team of people that we work with that have specialties in, in each area of municipal law. And we'll reach out to them to say, hey, um, you know, this is a, a cartway issue and we know which attorneys will deal with that. And we'll say, okay, is there a conflict? And if they say no, we'll say, great, uh, you're going to deal with that uh, and, and defend this township. So when you, again, it's the same thing when you call in, you, we want to make sure we have the, the name, the county of the township. Uh, if you know the policy number, great, send it to us. The person that will be that reported it as well as the person that we should be using as our primary contact for dealing with the claim. And then in some cases, you may know the date of the loss. Some, in some cases, it's actually the date that you received the, the complaint or summons. Um, next, again, we'll, we'll ask for the clerk information um, and, and then kind of we'll, we'll have to go through kind of what the loss is so we know what, what, what type of loss it is, general liability, planning and zoning, and we'll go from there. Again, the, the contact information. Again, if you know the claimant information or if there's any witnesses or anything like that and, and someone's a complaint, it's good information for us to get to know so that we know you know, maybe some more of the players involved in the process of that complaint. Um, you know, we'll ask for the, the, the lawsuit paperwork um, and we'll ask for, for the attorney to, to be sending it. So in some cases, it comes from your township attorney. In other cases, it may be coming from a third party attorney. Um, again, we won't ask you to reach out to the third party attorney but uh, we will ask you if you know their name and then we'll reach out to them to handle that. And then again, we'll provide that over to the claims administrator. We'll assign defense counsel um, and we have a vetted attorney list that we go off of. Um, once we contact them, again, as I mentioned, we'll, we'll go through and we'll say, see if there's a conflict defending the case. If not, we'll pass it on to them and they'll, they'll take over from there. And really it becomes a very easy process from the township standpoint, because they'll be doing all the legwork. They may be having a lot of questions for you, but as a whole, the, the town officers don't have to do a lot of the digging, what, what's the law in this? How do we defend this? They take care of it. They'll ask you the questions and they'll compile all the data to help uh, defend your township against any case that comes against it. And like I say, from here, it's, it's really in the hands of the defense attorneys and the courts. And uh, we, like I say, our team does a great job of, of really just making it as, as painless as possible for, for the township officers, because we know that you guys uh, have many other things that you need to worry about. And claims is not a, a major thing that you need to be worrying about. 
Um, so that's kind of how we do that. Um, during the procedure, you know, your clerk will work very closely with uh, the board and the, the attorney as well, um, just to keep them up, updated on the progress. We also get copied on the progress so we know how things are going. Um, and if there are issues, obviously we wanna know about them as well that, uh, you know, if there's a problem with the attorney, um, reach out to us, let us know, hey, this is going on or we're, you know, we're not thinking that they're hearing us or whatever it may be. Uh, again, we don't have that very often, but we just want to make sure that we're uh, in the loop if there is any issues or problems, because this is part of our, our coverage that we want to make sure is, is handled correctly. So the next thing I, I want to talk about is kind of documentation too. So in the last year, we've seen a lot of um, cut cables. Uh, so again, when you do certain things, make sure you're documenting, make sure you're uh, if it's cut cables, make sure you have it documented when you called for the lo locator um, company to come out and do the location of, of any lines that are down there. Keep copies of the correspondence. Um, the, the more information we have going into a case, that the, the better off we are. Um, so, and if there's hazards, make sure that you have it well marked and make sure you document when it is. Um, one of the, the instances I have uh, last weekend I was up at a township and we were walking around and we were looking at they had an old abandoned mine pit and first question that comes to mind is, is okay do you have it fenced off because now it could consider to be a swimming area do you have it fenced off uh, the next thing is is they said yes I said okay do you have a sign that says no swimming and they said well, we didn't think about that well those are little things that you can do to help make sure that you have it up, you know, signs posted, do not trespass, uh, making sure that you have um, it well documented what the hazards are, if there are hazards. And what I always say is take a look at it, make sure that you're taking pictures of it, make sure that you you have a log of any, any uh, hazards and what, and the notifications that you have to the general public. That will help us when we defend a claim because if we don't know that you put a sign up, then it's their word against ours, which kind of goes back to the beginning of the topic here. The other thing is, um, I've included this here. Uh, in, in the case of a cut cable, what we did is we actually had an affidavit put together where we said, okay, here is the date we called. Here is the date that, that we asked them to come out. Here's the location. Here's everything that they were supposed to be doing. Um, so um, that, that's very important to make sure that we, we have a good documentation as to everything um, related to when we called them and everything like that. So it's important to, to make sure we have good documentation. Going back to, to making sure you have, uh, I would talked about this earlier, the, um, Photos of, of road grade. This is a photo of a road grader that uh, this gentleman was trying to get around one of our road graders. The road was 21 feet wide. The road grader with the wing was 17 feet. Well, that leaves, according to my math, four, four feet for this Honda Odyssey to get around a road grader that was plowing a road. Um, the nice thing about this is, is there were enough pictures that day, as you can see, we can see exactly what happened, we can see the damage. This was a very easy case for us to deny that the road grader operator was not in the wrong, it was the vehicle that was in a hurry to pass the road grader. In the process, they ended up damaging themselves. Um, so that, uh, that helped us to defend this uh, case. Now, some of the other things that, that I think it's important um, to make sure you understand is, too, is uh, when you contract with people, make sure that what you what you do is you, you also have um, the proper documentation from them as far as their, their, their insurance, Oops, sorry, uh, uh, you know, a copy of their insurance certificate when you contract with these independent contractors because that helps that when we do our, uh, when we do our actual uh, work comp audit at the end of the year, we're gonna ask you to provide copies of the certificates of insurance for those people. 
So that's an important thing to, to make sure. And the reason why we ask for the insurance uh, certificates from the individuals is to make sure that if they if they damage something that they have the proper coverage so that the trust is not on the hook for that damage. Um, for example, if a if a township has um, if a township has uh, a contractor that has five hundred thousand dollars worth of insurance and the township does and that contractor does a million five worth of damage the township trust is going to be on the hook for that additional million dollars. So that's why we want to make sure that when we contract that they have the proper coverage. Now, we do realize that in some cases, we, we're not going to tell you to, to you know, spend five and six times this, the amount for a contractor to get to the million five, but they do have to have some type of liability coverage uh, just to protect the township. Um, again, you got to be prudent about what the risk is of what they're doing versus the coverage. But again, the because of the tort cap in the state of Minnesota is at a million five for municipal entities. That's why we recommend a million five. Um, just kind of go through here real quick. The the team that works on the insurance side. Um, my name is John Mokel. I'm the manager of the agency or the the trust. Um, I have Don Zimmerman, who, who does a lot of the underwriting for the trust, and Angie Hendrickson also does a lot of underwriting for the trust. Um, so they are the primary two contacts that you all have besides myself um, on the day-to-day -day business. If it's a claim, uh, Deb Province is our claims administrator, and you'll be dealing with her. Uh, but again, you'll want to be starting with Angie, Don, or myself as the people uh, to start any claims, and then after we get the initial information we pass it off to Deb. So that's uh, that's kind of a little bit of where we're at uh, for the the insurance side of things. And so I'll kind of turn it to question and answers here if there are any questions. Um, I'm going to go back here. I'm going to stop sharing and. And do we have any questions? Ah, yep, we have a couple of questions. One is, um, how does the liability coverage perform in a situation where the case of the gravel road, um, so the grass road shoulder, there's a culvert that is washed out, causes damage. So here's the, the best way I can explain this. So the question is, how does the liability coverage perform in situations where the gravel road, grass road, shoulder, uh, there's a culvert that washes out damage to the farm equipment that pulls over to allow a vehicle to pass? Um, typically, it's the it's up to the individual to do that. If the the road is at the the correct um, width and the township has done everything in and it's power to make sure that they know that the, the culvert is washed out and they've, they've got it marked. Um, again, it's the fault of the, the farm equipment. But if the, if the culvert is known that it's washed out and the township doesn't do anything to fix it, then the liability falls to the, to the township insurance and the township is liable for it. But if the township has it marked or knows about it or it's not, the township doesn't have any knowledge that the culvert is washed out, then there's really no liability on the part of the township. Um, the next, um, I think everything else is all related to other questions. So if, if there aren't any other questions, I'll turn it back to Steve and Leslie. Go ahead, Steve. Do you want is this a wrap up for today? Oh, 
we can't hear you. Sorry, I'm on mute on the Here we go. physical mute. <clears throat> Sorry. All right, so that the last question from Carlos. What's the liability where an individual claims their car is damaged from poor maintenance of a gravel road? Um, we, we tend to not like hypotheticals because they're only as good as the, the hypothetical facts and I've yet to meet the hypothetical question that turns out to be the same as the actual situation. So in general, um, it's pretty hard to show the damage uh, to a vehicle is related to the poor maintenance of a gravel road. I don't know that we've seen that. Um, you could maybe think up some circumstances like that, but any particular question you'd have to submit if there's a claim and then it gets investigated in the way that John was describing before we come to a solution. So the best approach is inspect your roads uh, where you see a problem, either make a plan to fix it or explain why you can't fix it yet. Okay, make the good records that we talked about earlier in the new officer training to explain what you saw, why you're doing something or why you can't yet. And, and that's kind of what you can do on something like that. So with that, we're gonna wrap up. Um, thank you everybody for, for joining us today. Uh, it was a long, a long sit and, and we hope it was informative. Again, you can catch these things online. We're gonna put them up later uh, as soon as we were able to get them online. Uh, you can view them again, cause what's better than once is twice, right? So, uh, or to other officers who haven't seen them, uh, they are available for you. And uh, thank you for joining us today.